they have no courage whatsoever to stand up to this mob. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't define my character by what the left demands. I don't define justice by what the left demands. I don't define the culture and society by what the left demands. This is not a case about all women. It's not a case about all women who've been sexually molested. This is a matter about two individuals. An accuser and an accused. Regardless of their gender. And that's the way justice works. You've got to have more than an accusation. Otherwise, we're all guilty all the time. Otherwise, your children are all guilty all the time. This spectacle in the United States, the Senate, the Senate Judiciary Committee, wouldn't be allowed in an elementary school where there's an accusation. There has to be something more when you suspend a child than when you suspend a confirmation. Mr. Flake is a coward. There's nothing noble about him. Susan Collins is a coward. There's nothing noble about her. Lisa Murkowski is a coward. There's nothing noble about her. They refuse to stand up for basic justice. Something men and women have fought for and died for throughout the history of this country. It's something an entire revolution has fought for. The media like to talk about freedom of the press. There are other essential rights too. Like due process. Like probable cause. Like presumption of innocence. The Democrats reject it all. They keep turning to the FBI. We need another FBI investigation. Now there should be no limits. Next they're going to say Kavanaugh should get a lie detector test. I'm telling you. We have no idea who Dr. Ford is, ladies and gentlemen. People are painting a picture for you and you're being told, accept it. Don't question it. Accept it. Don't question it. You're not even allowed to say, I don't find her credible and I don't find her credible. If somebody were to come up to me and say, that was done, I've got no witness, I have no evidence, I have no anything, what are you supposed to do about it? Worse yet, 36 years ago, that was done, I don't know exactly where, I don't remember how I got home, I, these are the people who were there, you go, okay, let me get on the phone. You call the people who were there, they say, I was never there. One of them says, I don't even know who the hell Kavanaugh is. That's her best friend. I was listening carefully to the way these speeches were given by the Democrats in particular. They already concluded that Kavanaugh is guilty. The other person in the room when this took place, Mark Judd. The other person in what room when what took place with Mark Judd? Those facts haven't been established. No facts have been established. We have a bare accusation. No facts have been established whatsoever. None. Not a single scintilla. No. Nothing. Nothing. If there were facts, wouldn't you think the Democrats would have presented them? If there were actual witnesses, don't you think the Democrats would have presented them? How about the lawyers? You know, at the end of yesterday, after Mr. Kavanaugh's testimony, you and I concluded, okay, it's over now. But Mr. Flake buckled. Because he's a coward. Because he doesn't believe in the rule of law. Because
because he doesn't believe in justice. And where do they go? They fall on this, this bromide. We need an FBI investigation. Ramirez and Stelnick. It won't, it, won't, it won't include these other women. And, and there'll be one excuse after another. And we think they were rushed. Or the president's orders to the FBI, they weren't, they weren't clear enough and so forth and so on. And what about Ms. Dr. Ford, rather, Dr. Ford's testimony? Stop focusing on the prosecutor and focus on what the prosecutor uncovered. Stop focusing on the dramatics. Focus on the facts. She said she doesn't like flying. She flies all the time on vacation and connected to her job. She said the polygraph was long. They were sticking all kinds of things on her. And, and, and it was much longer than she thought. The guy that gave the polygraph said he asked her two questions. She couldn't remember back in July whether she handed the actual transcript, the notes with the therapist, or was on the phone and gave a summary to the reporter at the Washington Post. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, that's not repressed memory. That's three months ago. Of course she knows. She didn't know who paid for her polygraph. Well, the lawyer said they had. Turns out she's six to eight miles. Her house was six to eight miles from the place, the general place, the club, in which she says she was sexually molested. She has no memory of how she got home. None. Well, that's repressed memory. Okay, but you've accused a man of sexual molestation. And unless your memory becomes unrepressed, what the hell is he supposed to do about it? When you don't have any witnesses and nothing else, except a bunch of screaming Democrats, slobbering media, and people running in the hallways of Congress screaming at you. What exactly do we have here? Nothing. Nothing. And then it's all dressed up in political drama, which is another giveaway. Several Democrats get up from the committee hearing and walk out. In other words, they bring their to protests from the streets into the committee room. This is unparalleled, unprecedented. And there are scores of Democrat House members who are women in the audience who happen to get up and walk out exactly at the same time, completely orchestrated, as they all go to the media and say the same thing. I also notice the diversion of the Democrats from the committee accusing Mr. Kavanaugh of accusing Dr. Ford of orchestrating all this. That's not what he did. He accused the Senate Democrats and their left-wing groups of orchestrating this. And he has good reason to. As I demonstrated on TV last week, and I've got memos right in front of me. If you go to, if you have Men in Black, it's in the appendix. Memo after memo, page after page. Strategy session after strategy session between Democrat members of the Senate, Dick Durbin, Chuck Schumer, Patrick Leahy, and others, with left-wing groups, delay the proceedings, put off the hearings, delay the proceedings, put off the hearings. One of them even talks about the FBI. It's their old book, ladies and gentlemen. 2002, 2003 memos. It's their old book. It worked in blocking a ton of George W. Bush's circuit court nominees, and they figured it'll work again, and it will. 
What's another week? What's another month? What's the hurry? What's another election? And Merrick Garland, don't forget Merrick Garland.